Hello and welcome to the arena. This is Coffee Stout with a Brew Crew here, and I have for you a very special deck, a very dangerous deck. I was playing this a lot, trying to perfect this before making the video, and this form of the deck is what we are bringing into the arena today. And my God, do the matches get a little bit bonkers. To beat this deck, you have to have an off the charts bonkers deck. To, to have this deck, you have to have a lot of wild cards. This is true. But stick with me for just the next 50 or 60 minutes and enjoy the absolute brutality of having Mondrax, treasure maps, clay-fired bricks, tinker's totes, and wedding announcements in the same deck. And, of course, we have to have the new god of mono white, Ogier Talk deepest foundation which i will now refer to as the overtime god because i probably am pronouncing this card way wrong correct me in the comments what is this deck trying to do well you're literally trying to stall the early game considers helps us get some things into the graveyard that we don't want to draw as well as a little bit of card draw early on turn one a lot of times people are playing tap lands especially with domain being out there so really nice to sneak out a consider and get a card into your hand that you want and get the option of one of two cards fantastic stuff then we have four copies of fading hope literally just to slow the opponent down because this is a mana intense deck and that's why we're running four copies of treasure map not only to scry early game but in the later game we are either a drawing cards with treasure map which is phenomenal by sacrificing a treasure or b early on in game we are paying one mana tapping it to scry we put a landmark counter on the treasure map and then if there are three or more landmark counters on it you remove those counters and you transform it and you create three treasures those treasures are going to go a very long way to be able to cast things like mondrak and tinker's tote on the same turn or mondrak and wedding announcement on the same turn we don't need to talk about wedding announcement but tinker's tote if you are unfamiliar creates two colorless gnome artifact creature tokens doesn't seem that great but you can sacrifice this and gain three life, which gives it a little bit of utility, especially if the opponent is trying to knock your life down very quickly. You can always sacrifice this, gain a couple life, and have those chump blockers on the battlefield. It's quite nice, actually. And, of course, you have the clay-fired bricks, which you gain a little bit of life when you play it. And you get to search your library for a planes card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle. This replaced Ambitious Farmhand for me when I'm thinking about white decks. Clayfire Bricks, I think, is a little bit better than Ambitious Farmhand because once Farmhand gets onto the battlefield, it's mostly a 1-1 until very late into the game whenever your life total doesn't really matter. The match is already decided for the most part at that point. You get that life immediately and then you can flip it later on in game. So when Farmhand flips later on in the game, it's 3 and you get a 3-3 life linker not that impressive but giving all of your creatures plus one plus one creating two colorless gnome artifacts and exiling a tinker stoat that you no longer care about is pretty powerful later on in the game it's very powerful later on in the game therefore this replaces ambitious farmhand in my opinion that life game early, gain early on it's super essential for standard yeah so that's their life gain. This is creating artifacts, gaining a little bit of life. We're slowing the game down so that treasure map can flip. And we're getting to our Mondrax, Glory Dominus, which of course needs no introduction, but you create a lot of tokens with this deck. And you can give this thing indestructible by sacrificing other artifacts or creatures, the treasures from treasure map count, but the neat part about this card is you create twice that many tokens if you create a token. Therefore, treasure map, create three treasures. Not if you have Mondrak. With Mondrak, you create six treasures. And the things you could do with those six treasures is absolutely insane. We could cast multiple wedding announcements on a turn, uh, multiple tinkers totes on a turn, and you're doubling these counters as well. And if that's not good enough for a deck, we also have two copies of the Overtime God Deepest Foundation, which triples the amount of creature tokens you put onto the battlefield, which means that if you have both Mondrak and the Overtime God, you will get 
what? Let's count. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12. 1-1 one, one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens. And whenever you have wedding announcements and the clay fire brick flipped over, they get really large. So if your opponent does not have board wipes and a lot of them, then they're in trouble. One more honorable mention about Mondrak is that for one generic and either two mana or four life, you could sacrifice two other artifacts and or creatures which are just polluting the battlefield at this point. This becomes indestructible. So the only real board wipe, there are two that could hit it and that is Farewell and the other one. What is it? Now I gotta go look for it. Sunfall. Sunfall and Farewell are really the only things that could get the Mondrake off of the battlefield except for Mono White's ability to exile one-to-one -one things, in which case we fading hope and return Mondrak to our hands. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, very sticky with those fading hopes, with those make disappears, all of the stuff makes Mondrak that much more difficult to deal with. And let's not get started on the overtime god being very difficult to deal with because when he dies, you return it to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control where he is either a basic land which ramps us, which is fantastic, or you pay three, you tap it, and you return him to the battlefield as the overtime god. And if you attack, and you can only activate this if you have attacked with three or more creatures this turn and only as a sorcery. That's not hard to do. Sucker comes in to the battlefield again again and again and again now i've already played through the matches so you won't see a lot of the overtime god uh, doing that kind of shenanigans but you do get to see the rest of this stuff really give the opponents a hard time maybe we even push control into the salty rope maybe that's a foreshadow you'll have to watch and see Sideboard is going to be very typical for a coffee stout deck, for a brew crew deck, which is fateful absences. Yep, got to have those suckers. And I like these better than the get lost. I do. I just like them better because they're wasting their mana anyway. And three clues is a little bit insane. Changing equations. We got those in for aggro. Disdainful stroke. We got these in to counter Shieldred or any of the big enchantments that are out there. Essence scatter. That, that counters Shieldred as well. Lauren of the Third Path. That kills all the big enchantment things. And two sneaky, brilliant restorations. And I love that this is part of the deck. I love that this is part of the deck because it is amazing whenever you go up against one of those sad fools that is trying to mill you out all the way and you let them do it down to 20 cards. You just let them do it. It doesn't hurt. Milling cards does not hurt. And then you use Brilliant Restoration. Return three Treasure Maps, three Clay Fire Bricks, three Tinker's Totes, and four wedding announcements from the graveyard to the battlefield. And you're and, and if you have a Mondrak on the battlefield, it's like, that's 51 ones. All right. <laughs> I have had, I have actually had trouble losing with this deck. Oh man, it is a beautiful thing. I really hope you enjoy the matches. I really enjoyed playing them. I really enjoy bringing this content to you. Um, two videos a week, that is our goal, two videos a week. Now let's get into the arena and show you how this deck operates as this great synergistic standard deck that almost operates like a historic deck. Thank you for joining today. Make sure you've liked the video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the post game for a wrap up. We will definitely opt to play first and absolutely no white mana. We do have a consider, so I'm gonna consider that half of a white mana. Good hand. If we had white mana, this would be perfect, so we're gonna keep it. We are going to keep and hope to God, pray to the shuffler God that we get a white mana. Drop an island. Pass a turn. Now, so far we look like mono blue to the opponent. There's a swamp. Consider, we definitely look like a mono 
monocolor deck. Oh yeah, we're gonna continue to look like a monocolor deck. Well, we'll get the treasure map rolling. Next turn we can hold up, make this appear, and scry with the treasure map. Tenacious Underdog gives us a lot of trouble, and we finally found it. We finally found a white mana. It's good stuff. For three, we want to hold up. We want to hold up on three because he's probably playing Graveyard Trespasser. That's my guess. If he does nothing, though, we try, but we don't really get much benefit off of our turn. Flesh Gorger. Another tough card to deal with, so we're going to counter that. And then we get to activate Treasure Map. Fading Hope. I think we keep that. Right, because now we can return the underdog. Drop this. Drop Mentor. Pass the turn. We want a Fading Hope on the underdog. Save ourselves on some life. See what he does, though. He might have a Shieldred, so maybe we're taking the hit. I think we take the hit. If he doesn't have anything, then... Okay. Go for the throw. Bounce it. Bounce it. Fading Hope. It did good the first time, so maybe it'll do good the second time. Unfortunately, we don't have land. Oh, man. All right. So he's got some dangerous stuff against our deck. Mm, mm, mm. Tinker's Tote. Let's drop one. Swing. Takes a block. That's fine. That is A-OK -okay with me. We are literally just trying to stall him at this point. Mono Black is a little bit of a problem for this deck. Comes on in. We'll double block. Slows him down. Anything we could do to slow down the opponent is good. And that'll do it. Let's look at the next card. It is a wedding announcement. We want to keep it. We really want to find land, but we do want to keep our tools. Return the shieldred. Draw. Flip. Top? Let's go top. These fading hopes seem to be doing us some uh, real good in th this particular matchup. And we do get the treasures from the uh, treasure map here, turning into Treasure Cove. So we have some time before we really need to start digging for mana. Shieldred comes down. Okay. Go to my turn, huh? Yeah. Draw. Um, make him pick that back up again. Slow him down. And we're going to sacrifice one of these treasures here. Oh, we get another treasure map. Keep it rolling, baby. Keep it rolling. Swing in. And we are probably scrying again, trying to get a little bit deeper. Shieldred comes back down. Back into action. He is having a lot of trouble keeping that resolved, and we like that. Mana, uh, yeah. Mana's good. Okay. Sacrifice this. Draw a card. More mana. Ugh. Now we're gonna flood a little bit, huh? Play the Mondrak. And I don't think we're attacking here. We want to flip this wedding festivity. Make it a little bit better. Shieldred might kill us. But we have things in the sideboard that make his Shieldred kind of bad. And that's what we're hoping for. Okay, and he's going to besiege the mirror. He did not bargain it, though. So we are safe from, you know, just infinite beseech the mirrors that's good Sh 
Shieldred's Edict. Cannot protect Mondrak from that. Well, let's dig. Fading Hope, yes. We lost the Mondrak. Draw. Okay, yeah, sure. No attacks, and then we play out our hand. For the most part, we're going to keep that Fading Hope up. He's going to gain some life here, but at the end of his turn, we make him pick it up. Flip the treasure map. Soren, fine. Let's dig. Yep, we want it. We definitely want that. He resolves the Soren. We're at 6 health. Consider yourself okay, makes a vamp. Drops a gix. He's out of mana. Now we return children. Pop the Tinker's Tote. Finally up to nine life. Feels good. Sacking a treasure. Yeah, drawing the Tinker's Tote. Drawing the clay-fired bricks. Interesting. Let's see, do we have enough? We need seven on top of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We do. Drop the bricks. Then we're going to craft this now. Craft with the Tinker's Tote, right? Flip it. It's a lot of damage. <laughs> what? This is 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It's not quite fatal. But one could dream. He takes it all. Wow. He took it. We're at 11. Shieldred can't kill me. Neither can flashing in these tenacious underdogs. That can't kill me either. He does make a 2-2. Two -two, or 2-3 two vampire with flying and lifelinks. Not bad at all. Trade that off is probably pretty smart. Swinging in with the gigs. Well, we block. Don't know why he swung there. Should have swung with the vampire. Okay, well, you wanted to play your other gigs? Well, who cares? Yeah, get out of here, man. That was not a good trade at all. Fateful Absence, come on in, baby. And probably get a couple of essence scatters as well. Go down one of these. Go down two of these. Yeah. Mondrak gets removed. Deep Foundation, we could get keep just one of those. And I don't even know what to cut here. Maybe a Consider. Maybe a Consider here. And <laughs> now we make him return his Shieldred over and over again. And then eventually when we run out of Fading Hopes, hopefully we have a Fateful Absence in hand. Kill it. And we are into round number two, baby. We got a Tinker's Toad. We got a Fading Hope. We got a Fateful Absence. Nice, nice little hand to slow the opponent down a little bit. Lay a Plains, pass the turn. Of course, he just had Swampies in his deck, which is fine. He can have all the Swampies he wants. We don't want a Fateful Absence that. Should we wait? Should we let him hit us for three? I think so. Because I really want to have that make disappear up. Hopeless Nightmare. Huh. It's kind of a weak play. Weak sauce. We'll discard. Swan or um, island. Discard the island. What else? Nothing. Hmm. Well, return that to your hand. 
I want a spray. Yep, we want it. We want it. Continue the pass. We have mana for next turn. Or we don't have mana for next turn. We had mana for this turn. We need to find mana for next turn. Underdog. Again, kind of a weak play. Anchorage is great. And I think we get Tinker's Tote going. We could gain some of that life back too, which is fantastic. Crafting is pretty decent, especially if you're playing slow, long, trodgy games like we are. Oh no, we don't want to see that. Flesh Gorger is very good. Hmm. Let's play the Clay Fire Bricks. Grabbing a planes. Playing a planes. Using fateful absence on the Flesh Gorger. I hate to do that. I really do. Yeah. Oh. The pain. The pain, but it is necessary. Sometimes pain is how you finally push through. Right? A lot of things hurt in life. And killing flesh gorgers definitely hurts. Pop that. Um, and no blocks. We don't have make this appear up anyway, so we can tap the Anchorage to make sure we just don't take damage this turn. Lily's good, but we do have a Fateful Absence. Well. Hopefully it's a minus, it is a plus. Oh. Well, why don't you decide what to discard, and we're going to think about this for a second. Kind of want to keep the Tinker's Toad. No. Drop the Tinker's Toad. Because we have Make This Appear. Kill that. Fun when they hit back and we're going to awkwardly not swing with the anchorage here because we want to hold up make disappear he hasn't been able to do anything that's good so wings on in now we can queue this up trade but that's not the right move go to my turn yes uh, another island. Fine. If I queue this up, one, two, three, we still have make this appear up. So we can start swinging a little bit heavier now. Watch him have the removal for the anchorage. The yeah, eyes make me wait for it. There it is. Oh, I am actually going to counter that. I'm going to counter it because now we get map tokens. Map tokens are absolutely phenomenal. Swings. Block. Still hasn't found land. Okay. Pull up the anchorage. Pop the map. We find another land. Swing. Yeah, we're going to do it again, my guy. Makes another map. Plays Atticar Waste. Uses map again. We need to get through the lands on the top. And it uh, looks like we have. We found a good one. That's going to keep us alive. And we're very close to crafting the clay fired bricks as well. Oh man, he is so stuck on lands. I, I think I feel a little bit bad for him. We're down to seven though, so he is nickel and diming us away. Come on in. Swing. Do the exact same thing as last time. He's used a lot of his removal already. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. That's what we're talking about. Now we can trade off these 1-1s one -ones while searching for our land and continuing to use the map tokens. Now it's going to be a little bit harder. We have to block. 
I think he might get us. Yeah, we're, we're going to take a hit. Maybe we're just crafting the clay fire bricks. Hmm. He found his fourth land. Can I do both? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we can. So, queue him up. Continue to make hits. Down to eight. Drop wedding announcement. Do it here. Okay, that saved us from some damage. Just a little bit. Maybe just enough. All swing is his smartest move. All swing right now, or removing my creatures and then all swinging. That would also be very intelligent. He must not have the removal because that would have been game ending. Let's block. Okay, we got a couple of turns where we could take some hits. Draw. Oh, too late, Essence Scatter. Too late. Mm. Well, that's three, and that's six. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. That's all we get. Maybe we're flipping the bricks. Get rid of that. Opponent. There we go. There we go. Next turn, we should be able to get there. Man. All right. Shieldred is a problem for us. We have an essence scatter. He really cannot swing this turn. That's interesting. And we counter any creature he puts out. So we do we win this one anyway? Oh, man, do we counter this? I think we do. I think this is the move, guys. It could not be the move, but it looks like the move. Yeah, he can't swing. Okay, we're going to draw. There's a draw. It's a clay fire bricks. That's not good. Good enough. Let's pull this up. Pull this up. We got to swing this turn. If we don't win this turn, we lose. This is 11, and one of these gets through. Do we just pull it off? Do we just beat Mono Black? Yeah, we did. Oh, man. What a nail biter. Down to one. Oh, what a nail biter. Now, I thought that he would pull that out, but flipping these wedding announcements into festivities, flipping this dude, went a long way to how we won that game. He was just unable to swing last turn. He would have lost everything. Ergo, we win. He needed a shieldred to just nickel and dime us to death, and we had enough anchorages and enough land to finally kill off the opponent. He was stuck on three lands for what seemed like forever. Probably seemed longer to him, though, but we were able to pull it out of the hat and take the win. I wonder if he had popped this clue if he would have survived here. Let's see, that's six and four is 10. 11, 12, 13, 16. 16 damage, gaining two, would not have saved him. So there was no way out for the opponent. Wait, no, because he blocks, blocks. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, no, no. I accounted for the blocks. Yeah, we won. No, fair and square. What a win. What a win. Play first.
Good mana base. Things to do on turn two, turn three. I like it. I think I'm going to keep this. And we have a rare Overtime King in hand. Down to six. We start with... Start with a coast. We can pretend we have something up, right? Drop the Attacar Waste. Find a land. In Triome, so... Definitely domain, right? Get our mana kind of situated. A planes. Maybe not domain. I don't think domain runs many planes. Let's try it with a monastery mentor. What do you got? Blue? You do have blue up. That's... Alright. Well, that is a shame. That is a shame. But we did sneak a counterspell out of his hand. Are you going to kill the clay-fired bricks? It doesn't do anything for a long time. But maybe he kills it. Maybe. Losing the Swift Spear is... I always call this the Swift Spear. The Mentor is always, always a shame. Tinker's Tote. Get, gotta get something on the field. We gotta get through his counter spells. So we drop the Tinker's Tote. Or we try to, Mr. Cast Counter Spells. And really cool sleeves. This man takes magic very seriously. And the old school syncopate. Well, you love to see it. Oh, Seiju here endures. Oh, I don't mind that. Yeah. Let's uh, start sneaking some lands out. Get a blue. That was a long-term play anyway, and, and he helped me ramp to get close to it. Maybe our opponent wants us to win. There's his fourth land. Pass. Treasure map. This is three. One, two, three. Have enough for the treasure map anyway. So let's pressure him. If he has counter spells, he cannot counter land. So getting the anchorage off is pretty sweet. Really turns it to my hand. All right. Oh, wait. Returns it to the top of my library. Yeah, well, that's a thing that happened. We still do get to put out the treasure map, though. A control player. Green, blue, white. Interesting choices. Getting really close to getting the Hornlock Whale down. Broker's Charm draws a couple. Maybe this is a good color combination. A good scheme for control, but we have an up the beanstalk here. Not bad. Drop that bad boy. Start scrying. Any land goes to the bottom. Fading hope probably goes to the top. And I think we swing here. The only real question is, is do we want to pop our map? Now I think I think we don't. Because we want to get the land into our hand with the maps. Just so we don't have to draw them. Opponent. it. It would be kind of cool to make one of these gnomes just gigantic as well. That's always an option and boy is playing so low. Definitely a control player if I've ever seen one. Yep, we will uh, gain some life just because we can. Might as well use up as much of the mana as possible. It makes me feel like I'm actually doing something even though I hypothetically am not. Power the boy up. Grow the anchorage. Swing. Leyland Binding. Okay, this is good. This is exactly what we want. Though he does get to draw a card because of up the beanstalk. What do you target, sir? Huh. Neat. He does not go after the anchorage. Bottom. K. 
cannot really fading hope that. So wing on in. Make a another map token. Down to eleven. And I think we go on blast zone, boys. Alright, we got another blast zone to the hand. Nice. Fading Hope will hold that up. Opponent is down to 11, so he is on a clock. Up the beanstalk yet again. Ugh, don't like it. Don't like it at all. Now, Deepest Foundation does not create more map tokens for us, so there's no hurry on getting that down. Hmm. Okay, go to my turn. Another anchorage, huh? That is kind of neat. Let's power up the anchorage. Let's drop one of these just in case he has another syncopate. So we'll wing away. Okay. Oh wait, syncopate. He he can't. Syncopate is a counter spell. What am I talking about? Don't listen to me. Haven't started uh, on, uh, on the beers yet, but it is a holiday season, so I probably will have a beer or two. But I wanted to record with a fresh mind for you guys. You're welcome. Play fired bricks, goes and reaches down, grabs more land, flips it. We keep. And we'll probably grow the blast zone. We want to get it to five. No, to two. Oh, only to two. Oh, we kill those. We are killing those. That's going to happen. Lay down arms. Fine. Absolutely. 100% fine. Please pass back to me. He does. We will put a charge counter on this. One. Hello, 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 sir. Well, we are going to blast away your up the beanstalks. That's definitely on the agenda. We're going to do it right now. Right now. I'm impatient. I'm impatient. We must do this now. He burns up his ley line binding just to draw a couple cards while those bean socks are going to go away. Smart. He grabs a map token. Fine. Drop another one. Charge up Anchorage and, and fight him? Or reach out and grab some more lands? It's a big question. Let's try to get a clay-fired bricks down. We're going to go for it. We're going to attempt it. It gets down. That's good. And now it's bad. Now Blastone's going to have to get up to six. But losing three Leyland Bindings and we get procs off of this stuff could be good. That's a much later game thing. But it, it, it could be effective. It definitely could. We will get him down to six this turn, though. Unless he removes my, uh, my gnome. I'm imagining we're giving him hard choices. And we haven't really fallen behind on cards. And a lot of that is due to those map tokens. There's a Triome. Rafin's Tawa. Okay. Fine. This six, this is six, this is six, this is six. Fading hope. Yep. Why don't you return that to your hand? You can do all of your things yet again. We just want to make sure that we continue to do stuff. Grabbing planes, gaining some life. That's so that's so good. Power up the anchorage. Swing. Down to three, baby. Down to three. Looking good. We're about to burn through this guy. Lay down arms is 100% fine. 
Now, he does have the Hornlock Whale. So we have to remember that whenever we swing with the Anchorage next time, he's going to return it to our hands. We could just flip the clay-fired bricks. Let's do it like this. We'd have enough. Play the overtime god. We have enough to swing in with the Anchorage as well. I love that so much. He's going to return it to our hand now. We've got to run him out of stuff he could do. Yeah, he's going to wait till I tap. Smart. Emperor! Oh, no, 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 no. He's going to kill the restless acreage. All right, well... Look at you. This is what <laughs> Look you at you. Hurting my people. Hey, at least we got a map token out of it. We got another one in hand. Huh. He's looking at it. That's an exile. Gross. Plus is on it. We greet our enemies. Hmm. Mana. Flip. And we're going to exile the Tinker's Tote, I imagine. Yeah. Bada boom, bada bang. We got some pressure yet again. And let's see if we can get some land into our hand. No, but we do get a Tinker's Tote that we could play. Hey, he's gone. Man, oh man, he just couldn't take the pressure. The absolute crazy pressure that this deck can produce. is It's just insane. Lauren of the Third Path comes in. And three Fateful Absences. Fading Hope's still good, but maybe not nearly as good as against Mono Black. So we'll drop it down to... Two copies of the Fading Hopes. Zoatic Glyph goes away again. We haven't seen it. It's one of the additions I made between the stream and now. But yeah, we definitely need these for the Emperor. It's going to be hard to get some swinging pressure on, though. We did really, really, really well with the uh, Restless Anchorage. Uh, maybe people need to start accounting for Anchorage. Considered doesn't get countered. That's why we probably want to keep it. But we could kind of do like a counter check on the opponent. So we're going to keep it just like this. This just in. Control players take forever in the sideboarding. If you notice down in the corner, we have been waiting a little bit over a minute. Time to smell the roses, but all the roses are dead. Time to look at the green trees, but all the trees have no leads so we can't do any of that we just got to hope to god he joins quickly and as soon as i started rambling he came back he gets to go first which is going to give him a little bit of an advantage to get the syncopates ready to get the essence scatters ready well probably not essence scatter for this deck but negates negates he's going to want negate <laughs> but he's going to have that on board before we can really do anything so Kind of a scary matchup here. Wait a minute. Where is he? Is he gone? Did we scare the control player out of the match? Is the control player roping us? That's the question. And we get a rope. I think we did it. <laughs> I think we scared off the control player. We did. <laughs> the control player is gone. Bam. Get out of here, Control. Get out of here. When a mid-range deck beats a Control deck and just absolutely hammers on them the entire game, you got something special. This board state is what he desires. Empty board all the way around. But he did not have the courage to stick in another match with this deck. That's awesome. This makes me think that this deck is a contender. This is definitely, definitely a contender.
Land, terrible. But we do have a treasure map. We have a make this appear. We have consider. We drew a plains, but I think we still want to start off with the Ottawara Soaring City. Pass to the opponent. We see a cottage. This cottage is dangerous. Field of Ruin, very dangerous. Okay. So we'll consider. I think I almost want the land, but we'll put it to the graveyard. He draws a mentor. Huh. All right. Pass back to the opponent. Plays a land. What else? You gotta have something else, Gandalf. Placid Rotten Tail. Okay. Don't think he's really doing anything else. He's gonna swing. I wanna return that to his hand. Mondrake. For now, let's put it on the top. That's part of the main part. That's one of the main components of this deck, so we're gonna keep it. Mentor. I think we have a little bit of time before he can start swinging. Especially with his mana base being as kind of screwed up as it is. And we've shown that we have planes, so. These are... Oh, this is not the one that destroys your lands. He's, this is a weird card to put in here. Promising thing. Well, alright. That's fine. Well, that's all you can really do. Swing for one. Treasure map time. Treasure map time, baby. What is this? Other artifacts and or creatures. Hey, hey, he found a, another source of mana. That's good for him. Counter it. He'll hit us for one. Five. Mondrag. No. Three, four, five. Let's lead out with a Tinker's Toad. Tinker's Toad, I think, is the exact card that we want right here. Now we can scry, get our life back, plus one. I mean, that doesn't really matter. Trade with Rock Tail. There's things we can do. We are behind in cards, so we're going to have to keep that in mind going forward. Seems to be a little bit hesitant to swing with the Rotten Tail. Maybe that means that we definitely trade with it. Beginning of instep, if you descended this turn, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. Sacrifice it, and you make a 4-3. Interesting. Pass. Huh. Seeing this on the field makes me a little bit hesitant to trade this off, but we will try to. Okay. Scry. We need the land. Yeah. It's a 1-1 one, one on it. That's actually kind of fine. If that's his deck, then he might be a little bit too slow to deal with us, and that's what we're hoping for. Mondrake. Or Wedding Announcement. Wedding Announcement allows us to scry, but Mondrake allows us to do what our deck wants to do. And if we really, really need to, we can sacrifice the treasure map in order to keep the Mondrake alive. Try Rexian Arena, we like it. 
I like that card on the opposing team a lot. Can't really swing with the Rotten Tail. He's gonna do the Promising Vein now. But what's he... What's he get? Forest. Fine. Oh, he did the Ascend. So that makes sense to me. Treasure map. Mondrek goes to the bottom. My turn. Wedding announcement. Wedding announcement. I'm just going to play the one. Because we want to flip the treasure map. Swing. Do you block, sir? No. Coward. Anchorage, yes. Now we can afford to do this. Love that combination between treasure map and the Mondrak. Absolutely phenomenal. Now we got creatures to spare. We've got life to spare. We've got treasures to sack. We're looking good. We're looking nice and solid. Pulls the wrestles cottage into the melee. We could trade off all four of these. I don't care. Oh, we could chomp chomp. Exiles one target card from a graveyard. That's actually pretty solid against our deck. Mentor. Not the right target. And we're chump blocking for a couple days, huh? Go to my turn. Draw. Fading Hope. Ooh, that is solid. Pretty solid. Solid draw for us. I like it. So wing with the Mondrak. Block, block? No. Okay, well, we will make... What, that's eight? Four? Four more one ones? There... I don't see a way out for him, especially with Fading Hope in the hand. Canker Bloom? Huh. Neat. You go after a wedding announcement. There's no way you don't target wedding announcement. There's no way you don't do that right now. Right. Yep, fine. Fine, fine, fine. 100% fine. We have seven one ones that are humans, and 1-1-1 one, 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 that is a gnome. Because we play new cards. Weird. Return that to your hand. Wedding announcement. Well, the Kinker Bloom put the wedding announcement on top of my deck. Probably didn't expect that, did he? We take it. We, we can take one damage. No problemo, sir. Placid Rotten Tail comes back down onto the battlefield. And what do we have? Well, that pro What went to the graveyard? Did Tinker Bloom go to the graveyard this turn? I think so. Rose the boy. We cannot draw yet. So... We're going to start to turn off by drawing a card, just so I don't forget. That seems like the kind of thing that I would forget to do. Clay fired bricks. We go find a land. Basic planes. Flip the clay fired bricks. That actually seems really solid. Yeah, auto pay. Flip it over. Exile the Tinker's Tote. Create some 1-1s. One 
About it? Why the hesitation, sir? Oh, baby, baby. <laughs> I love Mondrak, Glory Dominus. It's such a powerful card. Swing. Next. What do you do, sir? A cut down. That's fine. Ah! Get the value. Get the value. Yes. And we'll sacrifice one of these new ones. We don't want to sacrifice attackers. Mondrak. Hopefully. Hopefully. Going to get indestructible here. And he does. Your cut down did nothing but make me stronger. Blocks a 2-2, blocks a Mondrak. He takes 12 and dies. Got it. Unless he's got another trick. Yep, he's got the food, so he survives. But at what cost, sir? At what cost? And we draw a treasure map. Like, <laughs> how good can this get? Forest. There's been quite a pause here. Oh, he loses life due to Phyrexian Arena. Well, that is awfully cute. Did he have anything of interest to us? Yeah, maybe we are exiling a couple of enchantments. So we'll pull in the Lorens. As far as creatures go, he wasn't really that intimidating. The Glyphs, we have time with this deck. He's nice and slow. So at a Glyph, definitely a lot more powerful whenever your opponent is very fast. On turn three, you have a nice 5-4 blocker that discovers more tokens, generally. So I'm happy with this. We keep. And it looks like he is there. Just took him a while to respond. Oh, man, my hand. I want to keep this because mana is very important to this particular deck. But I also know that it's very slow. And Deepest Foundation, the Overtime God, don't know if we really want him right now. Let's keep and see what happens. Hey, we won the first round. We won, we won the first round. So round number two is just a bonus win. Jungle Hollow comes out and we're gonna hold back. He plays something we consider. We well, we paid him hope. If he doesn't, which he didn't, we consider treasure map. Yep. We draw that baby up right away. Planes treasure map. Opponent. Plays a snail. Okay. Well, we will exile. E Junjo? No, let's exile the deserted beach. We still have lands. Oh, lay fire brick. He's gonna pop, pop, poke us for one over and over again. Yep. Looks good. Looks good. There's a jungle hollow again. Okay. Swings in for one. Or do you play something first? Ah, you're one of those players. That's a weird card to have in a deck. Yeah, put it on the bottle. That's a really weird one. For seven, put seven 1-1 one -one counters on target. This guy is a beast in draft. Could hold that. Could fading hope, fading hope. Could actually go for some value here. I think we just go for value and pass, right? Do that. Play. Tinker's tilt holds, holds him back. Treasure map. I think I'm going to be greedy here. Yeah, we're going to be greedy. Remember, greed never pays, unless it does, and then it pays really well. Okay. 
Comes in for three. Kind of weird, not gonna lie. We're gonna take the three. Mondrak. I told you greed pays off. Do it again. It's another Mondrak at the top. And I think we just blast this boy onto the field. But we do it with treasure. Yeah, we're going to need some land, but that comes in tapped. We don't want that one. Again, I am being greedy. Very greedy. Well, we can always fading hope the Mondrak. So maybe not as greedy as I anticipated. Could come in with everything. We don't mind. These are all brand new cards, so... Huh, except for the... Um, Restless Cottage and the Jungle Hollows. Stuck on lands. I've seen a lot of people stuck on lands. Another new card. This guy loves new cards. Goes to my turn. That's fine. That is a okay. We got an Anchorage. Baby, baby, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Oh, we definitely want to get that guy a roller right now. Draza Atawara. Tinker's Tote. See, we got new cards too. But we also have Mondrak. Oh, nope. Hey, we don't want to swing. We don't want to swing. We would we would lose a Mondrak. Or we would be forced into getting rid of our last treasure. We wouldn't want that. Fine. If he descends if he descends but he chose not to attack perfect that allows us to scry again look at the top tinkers two. yes sir we do want to draw that go to my turn well we definitely have to keep playing our game so we sacrifice a, another treasure we draw a card it's a planes planes is good Gry creates a bunch of treasures. Mentor looking really solid right here. Man, oh man, oh man. How do you beat this deck? <laughs> I can't even flip this. You can flip that. Play fire bricks. Return that to his hand to where he loses literally everything let's return that flip it flip it over awesome and I guess we're sacrificing the tinker's toast we want to keep the treasures we want to keep the gnomes Bam! Bam! Oh man, this is absolutely brutal. Swing. It's gonna double block the Mondrak, guaranteed. Yep, sure does. He's never gonna get the seven. He's never, ever, ever, ever gonna get the seven lands. Return. Actually, just make him indestructible. I'm being greedy again. But I think Reed's gonna pay off in this particular matchup. Sack. One. Two. Let's look at the draw A card off of the Treasure Co. But we use our mana pretty effectively. A cut down. Really? Okay. Well, that's fine. Indestructible, baby. So you lose a bunch of stuff. And you get two one ones. Scary. Terrifying one ones. I don't know. These guys do look a little bit creepy. I would run away. Fine. I'm going to make you pick him up again. Yep, go to my turn. Monastery 
mentor. Fine. Now, here's the thing. Do I go for a win right now? If I pick him up, that's two, six times two is 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Pick him up. Doesn't matter. Power up the anchorage and swing, and he's gone. Man, oh man. Now, there is one match that I took out of these matches. There is one. Only one. And my god, if you've drawn every single land in your deck before you before you get halfway through your library, um, that is a, a that that's rough. That's rough. And then the guy had everything. He had Tamio and this and that. I'll put little clippets at this point in the video. But, I mean, the guy was just putting out tons of mice. Tons of mice. He was putting out Tamios left and right. And he finally eked out of win after 45 minutes. That's the only reason this match ain't in there. Is because, my God, 45 minutes? You guys would have the patience of... What has a lot of patience? Patience, patience, patience. Well, not of a dog. You definitely have more patience than a dog. Maybe you have an elephant. Yeah, elephants seem like they're patient. Yeah, you'd have to have the patience of an elephant. But this guy getting stuck on lands like this, a lot of it is because we are so good at getting lands out of our library that we could, we can, we 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 can do that. We we are always going to have more mana than the opponent, or so it seems. Uh, mostly because of the card that we cannot see yet, but we are going to talk about in just a moment in the post game wrap. But my god we played four rounds we won three of them and it wasn't even close this deck is absolutely brutal mono black we won by one health one health but we were able to eke past mono black it, and that's probably our toughest matchup is either mono black or orzov Orzov is absolutely brutal for us to go up against, but we were able to eke those matches out, and it was absolutely, unbelievably astounding when it works. I mean, I don't know what could really beat this deck very well. You got the Monastery Mentor, who's able to create tons of 1-1 one, one white monks, so it has to be dealt with. It absolutely has to be dealt with. Mondrak makes those even more monks so you got to deal with this you got to deal with this you got to deal with this you got to deal with our creatures in our deck deck only has seven but our ability to propagate tokens on the battlefield with wedding announcements tinkers totes and clay fire bricks makes up for a lack of creatures quite a bit this is not a control build at all this is a creatures deck with seven creatures in it and it is just hilarious to just tear your opponent piecemeal by piecemeal apart as they struggle to find some way to hit you. And when all else fails, you have the Restless Anchorage. Wouldn't go up to three in this deck. Two is just fine for creature lands. We we just want two of those. And oh my god, treasure map is just mwah, beautiful, especially with Mondrak on the battlefield. It was an amazing deck. I will probably continue to play this deck after this video is published, unless this video gets popular and then lots of people find ways to counter it. And then me having a YouTube ta channel comes in conflict with <laughs> my enjoyment of Magic the Gathering Arena. Thank you for joining today. Make sure that if you stayed this long, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you guys stayed this long, you guys are awesome. Thanks for joining me today. It was great fun having you. It was great fun making this video for you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.